Hey everyone, thanks for taking the time today. Uh, today, uh, Jeff and I are gonna go through a little bit of scorecard at scale. We're gonna explore some of the possibilities for trying to lift security for all of our, uh, all of our open source projects. My name is Steven Augustus. I am uh, the head of open source at Cisco. I'm also one of the scorecard uh, steering committee members and a scorecard maintainer. Yeah. yeah, hi everyone, I'm Jeff Mendoza. I'm also with Steven, a scorecard steering committee member. Um, I'm also a maintainer on the OpenSSF um, all-star project as part of scorecard and Guac. Uh, I also lead the securing critical projects working group and my day job is a software engineer at Kusari. So, big announcement. I figured yeah. I'd toss this slide in. Um, pretty exciting this week. Uh, Scorecard was accepted as an incubating project for the OpenSSF. So I did a quick blurb of what incubating projects are. We're kind of in the, uh, you know, there, there, are three, uh, there are three stages for uh, OpenSSF projects. Uh, sandbox, incubating, and graduated. So now that we're incubating, we will be fastly working towards graduation status. But I wanted to call that out here that that's, this happened as of this week, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, so what does Scorecard do? Uh, scorecard, uh, I think our, our stated, our stated chart within our charter, our scope is that we want to automate analysis and trust decisions for uh, the security posture of open source projects. Um, you should be able to use that data to try to gather trends, reason about trends uh, for critical projects. So we're not just necessarily depending on uh, individual uh, scans. One to one, we'll talk about what scorecard looks at lo looks like not at scale. And then we'll talk about where, where we're going. One of the, um, one of the, the measures uh, that we have is we actually, um, we actually calculate uh, score, scorecard scores for open source projects across the world. There are, uh, Jeff will get into it, but there are over 1.2 million, I think, uh, projects that we're, we're scanning in a, in a huge uh, big query um, uh, table. Um, and then we want, to, we want to be able to augment the existing uh, the existing tools that you use to assess security posture. So if you've got existing uh, security processes in place, policies in place, you should be able to use Scorecard to augment that, right? Now, what, is, what, what are the non-goals of Scorecard, right? Scorecard is not your be-all, end-all. It's not gonna solve all your problems. If you run Scorecard, magic things won't happen on your repos. You need to understand that Scorecard is merely one of the tools in your arsenal. And I think a big, a big conversation that we've had back and forth with um, consumers and, and some of the contributors is that aggregate scores for scorecard, actually that, that top level score, score is not necessarily the most efficient measure for the check behavior, for all of the check behavior. So we're not gonna go into the, the checks explicitly. We're gonna give you, um, we're gonna give you some, some means of like following up with us afterwards. Uh, and, and uh, checking out what's in the repo, reading through all of the checks. Um, but if you're familiar with Scorecard, actually, how many of you are familiar with OpenSSF Scorecard? How many of you have actually <laughs> used it? I love that. All right, cool. Um, we're working on aggregate scores. Um, again, it is not sufficient to just assume that a 3.5 is very bad. Actually, 3.5 is, you should, you should do some work there, but. Uh, <laughs> But we, so next we're gonna go into scorecard not at scale, and mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, take it away. Thank you, Stephen. Um, yeah, so let's get into the nuts and bolts of the scorecard universe and how to actually run scorecard. So first, um, kind of the not the topic of the talk, I wanna talk about how do you run scorecard on just one repository. Um, so scorecard, I believe started out, um, you know, the most basic usage as a CLI. So you can download the tool, you can do go install, um, this is the GitHub repository, and when you run the tool on your command line, you give it a repository. It could be a um, local Git repository, a GitHub repository, GitLab repository. Right now, we're looking at adding more forges, um, and it'll give you this chart tabular format of your scores and the reasonings behind the scores, and um, you know what you can do, some, some ideas on how to fix that. Um, so that's baseline scorecard. Uh, the next thing you can do is you can um, install a GitHub action if you have your uh, repository on GitHub, and it will, you know, I'm, for these slides, I'm gonna click on a few of the links and, and show, you, show you what the, uh, 
what the sites look like. But uh, the, the scorecard action is actually in the action, um, I guess, catalog. Uh, so if you go through the readme, um, it'll give you some steps here on how to go, go and click through. Uh, it's basically a workflow file that you just put into your GitHub repository. And then uh, whenever you do um, a commit or make a release or whatever, it'll run scorecard on your repository and tell you the results. Um, so again, not at scale. Uh, you do this on one repository at a time. Uh, and lastly, for running scorecard or at least viewing scorecard results on one repository at a time, we have the scorecard visualizer. Uh, the visualizer is a new um, sub-project under the scorecard universe. It's uh, what it sounds like, I guess. Uh, it's a visualizer. And um, there is the code here on GitHub, but I'm going to click on the link of the hosted version of the visualizer on uh, github.io. And this is a project I work on, I mentioned before, Guac. And it will pull the results for scorecard for whatever project you give it in the, um, in the URI and tell you not just the top level score, but all the details and all the different scores. Again, the reasoning, the same kind of stuff you would see on that uh, CLI output there. Um, yeah, and then you can, you can, some of these you can click through and, and kind of dig down and dive into what's going on. Okay, so that's, at, that's all of scorecard, you know, one repo at a time, but now let's say you have a bunch of repositories. Too many to go and run scorecard and look at all the results on, and you want to bring up the, your score on everything you want to try to find, um, where are my deficiencies, things like that. So you need to run scorecard a lot. <laughs> um, so the first option here I'm going to cover is AllStar. So AllStar um, is a GitHub app. Uh, you can install it on your whole organization. You can install it on particular repositories. You can install it on many organizations. Um, and then what I'm going to show you here is um, once you install the app, you put in configuration on each repository. Oh, sorry, you put in configuration at the org level. And the configuration tells the app, the app reads the configuration from your org level repository. And it says, uh, this configuration I'm showing you here is run a bunch of scorecard checks. So AllStar will run scorecard checks, whichever ones you give it, on all the repositories in your org. And, but what does it do with the, uh, the results of the check? Uh, I'll show you here. Um, it, it does more things than scorecard checks. It can open, uh, it can do other checks, but here for scorecard checks, it opens GitHub issues. So you specify, um, I care about this check, and I care that the score is above a certain number, like eight or five. And if your score is below that number, it will open an issue and say, hey, you have uh, something you need to remediate here. Um, there's two different configurations for uh, uh, AllStar and where it opens issues. The default configuration is that it opens the issues on the repository that needs the remediation. So that would be a good um, way to get repo owners to go fix their own scorecard. But if you just want to run scorecard across a bunch of repositories and see all the results in one place, you can tell AllStar to open the issues in a single repository. So here I have a um, single repository in my test organization that I opened all the AllStar issues for, for every test repository in my org, or every repository, but this is a test org. <laughs> and um, I can see in one place all the, all the uh, areas that I need to go remediate. All right. Um, the next thing you can do to kind of view scorecard results at scale is look at the API. So scorecard runs uh, or hosts an API. It also hosts a BigQuery data set. And you can um, go and query it for whatever score you want to see. And you could query for a lot of scores and, and view those all in one place. So um, uh, API docs are taking a little bit while to load up, but it's a standard swagger. And um, the, the results are essentially the JSON output of running the scorecard locally. And you can just pull those down from the API. And for those who are going to view this later, uh, just that link is api.scorecard.dev. So where does the API get the results from? Um, 
two, two sources. One is that GitHub action that I, I uh, talked about earlier. If you install that on a repository um, and you configure it to, sh to publish your results, those results actually get published and verified by the scorecard um, API and then are able to be served via the API. The second one is the cron job, which is what we call the cron job, the cron job, not, not just anyone, the cron job. And um, it runs weekly and scans about 1.2 million projects. So you, if you have a popular open source project, there's a chance your results are already there. Uh, but if they're not, uh, we have a CSV file here and anybody can go and uh, submit a PR and say, please add my projects to the CSV file and we will likely accept it. Um, but the CSV and the cron aren't gonna scale forever, and you may not want to um, put all your, your projects in the CSV and have us scan them. You may want to like scan them yourself, so that's why I, we have a, a lot of different options here. So Jeff, you mentioned that there are two ways to, uh, two ways to get scores into the API. Um, which one takes priority? That's a good question, Stephen, do you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> GitHub action. So if you're yes. running the GitHub actions, it will prioritize those scores. Um, the GitHub action is also running more frequently. The cron job that we have is running, again, across 1.2 million plus repos a week, uh, which means that it, uh, it takes a little time, right? So if you're, if you're actively running the GitHub action, you're gonna get scores a lot faster into the API. All right, um, the next way I'm gonna talk about uh, running scorecard at scale is scorecard monitor. So um, here is the, the report. I'm gonna click here where to have the report actually a little bit bigger here, maybe. Um, so what Scorecard Monitor is, is a, um, it's another GitHub action, but it's, uh, it can actually be, be run outside of GitHub as well. Um, you, you connect it up to uh, a place and you give it some config. Uh, I'll give you an example of a config here, uh, scope JSON. And you say, please, uh, please, show me the scorecard results for these orgs or these um, repositories. And you can say like all, all of the, the repositories in my org, for example. But if you look at my config here, I'm trying to get results from my test org and also from some popular open SSF uh, repositories. And if we go back and look at the uh, output, um, I don't see any of my test uh, repositories. And the reason is, is because the scorecard monitor results are only from the API. And my test repositories are not running the GitHub action and I'm not, they're not part of the, the CSV uh, cron job. So uh, this is a great way to um, periodically pull the API for a bunch of repositories and view them in a nice little uh, table. And it also stores the old score so if the score has changed, it'll show you the score delta. And this is a great thing to you know, go and look at to analyze you know, trends and things like that. So yeah, so again, this is more of an analysis after the fact. It is not necessarily running scorecard. Yes. You need some way of doing uh, that. What is really cool about the scorecard monitor is that there is a bit of a discovery mode. So if you have, if you, if you point it at an org, instead of having to explicitly list out all of the, the um, the repos within your organization, you can put it into discovery mode and it's like, ah, I found some stuff. On the next push, or it will, you can either have it push to main, don't necessarily recommend that, um, but you can also have it propose a PR for the repo that you're storing the reports in. And from there, you can kind of go in and, and review and see which, um, there's a database.json as well as a scopes.json that update as, uh, during the runs. So that also runs on a cron, you can set that. You can either one-shot it and decide to you know, do, um, do it directly within the repo manually, or you can, you can set it to run, by default it'll run every week. Um, and also in the report here, if you do see a um, score that you want to dig in deeper, uh, the view link links to the hosted instance of the scorecard visualizer. Um, which will again, we, we looked at before on you know, looking at a single result of a scorecard. Okay, um, and the last, the last uh, possibility for running scorecard at scale is um, something that we're working on as part of the, the scorecard uh, maintainers is we wanna, you know, we have these options. Um, we feel like there's a couple gaps because not everybody wants to use the API 
and people want to be able to you know, run, run Scorecard on a bunch of their repositories, maybe private repositories, and then have a way to interpret and take action on the results. Um, so what I've done recently is a proof of concept uh, where I modified the scorecard monitor and the scorecard visualizer to instead of pull the um, JSON results from the API to actually just use a local file uh, to view the JSON results of your scorecard runs. Um, so hopefully this great diagram <laughs> shows you that you, know, you could look at the monitor and you could look at the visualizer and, and see what's going on, but um, all this is, could be local on your machine of, uh, with a local file with the results. Um, and to get into that, I, um, I have some links here on the, the code. The monitor and visualizer changes are kind of hacks, uh, but they're definitely something that I want to um, polish up and, and get as an option and figure out how we can run that. Uh, and then the last missing piece on this is the um, how to actually run Scorecard across a bunch of repositories because um, as we discussed at the beginning, the CLI, you give it a repository you want it to run it across and um, you don't actually, you know, it doesn't run across multiple. So I wrote a quick uh, wrapper around the um, scorecard CLI that will run uh, across many repositories based on a GitHub app installation. So um, if you had a GitHub app that you installed on, every, on your organization, it would then have access to all the repos in your org. And then if you provided those credentials to a, um, a wrapper or this wrapper or some other instance of scorecard, uh, it would then run across just everything and output the, the results in one big JSON file. So this is also proof, proof of concept. Um, we're looking for feedback. Steven's gonna talk about that a little bit more, but um, this could be part of the uh, scorecard, you know, the main, main project, and we're trying to find out um, how we want to, to see that. So here I, I ran um, again, those test orgs that, that we saw before that were not part of the visualizer, uh, sorry, not part of the monitor results, um, I ran those locally using that wrapper. I said, um, here's my wrapper. It's actually, it's actually installed on uh, the test org as well as a couple of reposit test repositories I have in my, um, my own account. And it generated um, a scorecard report here using the, the, the code that I mentioned, the proof of concept. And also I have, um, so the, the monitor results are just a markdown file. This one looks a little different because um, the CSS on a local markdown file is different than the, the one on GitHub. And then, um, please ignore the errors. <laughs> the, uh, the monitor, uh, sorry, the visualizer I have running on my machine, this is on localhost, it's, sorry, it's small, sorry you can't see it, but uh, is uh, also pointing at those local results. So both the monitor and the visualizer here are pointing at the local results, um, these test orgs, and I saw the, the whole uh, roll up, and I also can dive down and see uh, the individual results on all the different checks on my local files. All right. Cool. So after that very cool uh, proof of concept, um, we're trying to get an idea of what we want to actually look for, right? So I am someone who is consuming scorecard day to day. Maybe it is my, maybe it is my job. Maybe I am, I am, uh, maybe I'm a maintainer who is generally interested in, in improving the posture of my pro project personally. Um, so again, I'm going to go back to the scorecard goals. Uh, we want to make sure that it's easy to automate analysis and trust decisions. Uh, we want you to be able to leverage that data to improve the security posture, right? And this, again, is meant to augment the existing tools that you have in your tool chain. Again, Scorecard is merely one tool in your arsenal. It's not supposed to be the be-all, end-all thing, right? Um, so it's good to understand who you are, right? And I'm going to talk a little bit about myself really quickly. Um, you may be a project consumer. You may be, you may be a maintainer or staff, someone who is contributing to a project in general. Um, or you may be responsible for assessing security risk in some way. You may be part of a foundation, you may be part of a company, uh, you could be part of the OSPO, legal compliance and risk management functions within that company. Um, who am I? I happen to be all three, right? So part of the reason that I, uh, so, so Scorecard and, and All Star started off as um, projects within um, Google's uh, open source security team, um, and it was kind of driven from a need uh, for 
Google's OSPO, actually, to, to assess security risk uh, for open source projects that they were working on. Um, so I'm very big on not repeating work. Um, before I start a new open source project, I go, have I exhaustively looked for things that might be serving this purpose that are going to be better maintained than I might be able to do, right? And I came across Scorecard and I was like, wow, this is really cool. I wonder if I can get involved. So I started contributing, I eventually became a maintainer and now I kind of work on governance related things for the steering committee and, but internally at, at, uh, you know, at my company, I manage an open source program office. And that means we are responsible for all of the outbound open source projects that, that, that you know, kind of leave our gates. Before, our, before we release projects, we try to make sure that uh, the OSPO has reviewed the project, legal has approved the project, as well as the business approver, right? So either that person's, you know, the, the submitter's manager or, you know, their, their reporting chain in general, right? Um, and I found that a lot of the questions I was asking are, are, are answered by scorecard. Do you have a contributor file? Are you, doing, are you doing dependency updates? Are your projects free of vulnerabilities? Is, you know, do you have some of the other community health files, right? Are you doing, are you actively doing um, CI tests? Are you doing static? code analysis, right? Are you fuzzing your projects? Are you using best practices? Um, you're using the best practices badge, right? I think the best practices badge is um, a bit of a self-attestation to a lot of the, you know, the, 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 the role of, of, of things that I, I, I just mentioned. Um, so this project was useful to me, not just as from the pers perspective of a maintainer and consumer within the OpenSSF, also, you know, I maintain projects in Kubernetes and, and to do group and a, a few other places. So this is like, wow, I can bring this to a lot of our projects and just upscale immediately, right? So it's important to understand who you are and what you're looking for out of Scorecard um, before you start getting, you know, before you get started with assessing uh, some of the results, right? I want you, I hope you all use Scorecard. It looks like most of the hands in the room say, say that you are, score, you know, you're using Scorecard or you're Scorecard curious at least. Um, I want you to run Scorecard because it is useful to you. If you don't feel that it is useful to you, I want to understand why, right? I want to help you, I want to help you get to that, that step. So come and talk to the maintainers. We're going to, we're going to drop where we're at. Um, we have a few meetings throughout the week, uh, throughout the month. Um, on, you know, on, on, on different times to, to be, uh, you know, to be um, useful for people across different time zones. But we want that feedback, right? Because that's going to help shape what we do with the project next, right? Again, it's not your one tool. You want to understand what role you're playing in assessing. Uh, you know, I, I think um, Jeff was having a conversation with someone and, and they said, well, it's useful for at least getting um, understanding where I consistently have bad checks. If I'm able to run scorecard at scale, I can understand, hey, we don't, we don't have dependency tools enabled, right? Maybe it's as simple as checking a box in GitHub to turn on, you know, to turn on a dependabot, right? Rolling out a dependabot config across all of your repos, right? That's, that's a really quick upscale for managing dependencies, right? Um, but again, I think being able to just quickly assess hey, we're not doing community health files. We, we don't have security policies in place and fix them at scale, right? Um, maybe it's your, you know, maybe it's, uh, you know, 10 bash scripts in a, in a trench coat that you're using to kind of roll this out across your org. But I think first and foremost, being able to identify trends, that's what Scorecard is useful right? for. Now, looking through Scorecard Monitor results, I want to mention that Scorecard Monitor and Scorecard API Visualizer are two projects that were donated. We had, we, these are projects that will be adopted into what we're now calling the scorecard universe, universe, universe. Mm -hmm. um, so we want you to be able to use these projects to detect trends. We want, um, you should focus on specific checks, first and foremost, right? This is meant to having all of these projects together, uh, the monitor, API visualizer, all-star scorecard, all coming together. That's supposed to enable um, repo owners to do this at scale. Jeff talked a little bit about what that can look like. Um, but what could it, like, where would you run it, right? This, um, you know, Jeff and I were talking about this, and you're like, maybe multi, you know, maybe multi runs for, for scorecard, multi org runs uh, across the org runs 
are as simple as a new flag within the scorecard CLI, right? Then there's a lot of flexibility in how you decide to deploy that, right? We don't necessarily need to, to, to care explicitly how you do that. If we are able to, say, stick it in a container, attach, you know, attach code, build a very lightweight container, and, and ship that to you, would that be good? Is this potentially a replacement for uh, the scorecard, the existing scorecard GitHub action? Maybe, possibly, po possibly, probably, probably. Um, Helm charts, right? A new GitHub action altogether, right? How do you want to deploy this? We, we want to know. We want your feedback here. Um, my, my, pers my personal first thoughts are new flag in the scorecard CLI. That's going to enable a lot of use cases, and we're going to be able to gather a bit more feedback about how people want to implement it. I think long term, where we should be going or where should we go, it's we've got the scorecard universe, right? We've got a CLI tool that is written, a, a CLI tool, the web app, um, a lot of the scorecard core um, infrastructure and tooling is written in Golang. Uh, scorecard monitor and API visualizer written in JavaScript. We have some metrics analysis tools uh, written in Python. Those are not out yet, but coming soon. Uh, there is uh, an implementation of scorecard called Clow Monitor that the CNCF uses to analyze the uh, security risk for their projects. Um, and it is now a requirement, I believe, um, for projects that are going up in the, um, in the graduation stages uh, within that foundation, right? Clow Monitor is written in Rust, right? So now we've got all of these tools. We've got this polyglot ecosystem that is kind of uh, in need of convergence, right? We saw how All-Star was able to um, how All-Star was able to report on uh, issues, right? Report on issues either within the maintainer's repo itself or across, or very specifically in a repo for, say, the security, the, you know, the, the, the risk assessor um, to, 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 to review on, on their own, right? Is that a better, you know, is that, is that a method that works for you? Or would you prefer scorecard monitor, right? Where I can review a report in aggregate of all, the, of all of the scores across not just the org that, that that report is stored in, right? Is that a better path for you, right? That may be a better path for the person who is assessing risk across those orgs. It may not be, be a better path for the maintainer who wants to action on that, right? So how do we drive those, those two together, right? Ultimately, we are a small, I, I think this is, um, you know, it's, it, you've probably heard it a few times, we are a small team. Uh, a lot of open source teams or small teams. We only want to build what is useful to you, right? So most importantly, we want your feedback, right? We want your feedback now, after this talk, in the community meetings, on our repos, discussion issues, what have you. So that's it. I think we have a moment for a question or two before we wrap. Um, hope you enjoyed the talk and the possibilities for scorecard at scale. I'll write it down. Thank you. Oh. Your screen comes up. <gasps> Try again. Uh, awesome talk. Uh, I'm curious, do you have uh, like a use case or parts of scorecard that would help me look at my dependency tree and figure out like, hey, do I have some dependencies that are getting mm -hmm. like really high scores, really low scores, that kind of thing? Um, sort of follow up is like, uh, if I've got a proprietary repo, is there any value do you think to knowing my scorecard for some of the best practices that apply there? Yeah, for sure. So um, I'll, I'll hit the follow up first. The scorecard also has a local run mode. Right, so similar to what Jeff was doing with the kind of local results uh, POC, there is a local, uh, there's a local mode where you can run it across proprietary or projects that you may not be able to be ready to ship yet. Right, so that's good for, I think, in the in the OSPO uh, scenario where you have not um, you have not published this project yet, right, and you want to make sure that the review is clear before you before you open up to the, the public. Um, doing the for the first. First part of the question, I'll plug the other uh, open SSF project I'm a maintainer on, which is Guac. Um, so if you have an SBOM, you can upload it to Guac, and it will give you a, um, it, it tears it apart and gives you the nodes and edges of all the parts of it. And it can also pull more information from the internet about the, the packages in your um, supply chain. So it'll, it, one, of the, one of the pieces of information it pulls, other than vulnerabilities, is the scorecard score. Speed round, last one. 
So you, su you support private repos. What about uh, if you're not on the, you know, get github.com or gitlab.com, uh, but on a separate, you know, hosted service? Do you, does, is that supported? Yeah, so that is a great question, and I apologize for not including that as part of the talk. One of the things that we're working on is extending support for CodeForge's. Um, we actually have, so we have uh, baseline support for Git, GitLab. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty decently covered. There is actually someone working on a, um, a, a, uh, an initial client for Azure DevOps repos as well. But you have to be aware that what is good for you may not be you know, like what is good, what is a what is a good check or a good score on GitHub may not be the same for uh, may not be the same for a client with less support, right? So, for example, uh, getting results on so if you're running privately, uh, getting results around uh, branch protection, right? You're not going to get a good score there because you've got nothing to reach out to to assess that score. So. Thank right. you for your time. Thank you so much.